All right, cool. Uh, we're in here with my business partners from uh, Phoenix, Arizona. This is Alicia Diaz. This is my brother, Ethan. We're going to kind of raise a little awareness about her father. And, you know, I'm always big on pushing, you know, different different situations. We helped out with Richard Delisi, um, with Corvain Cooper. And right now we're here to discuss Robert Deals. So besides, you know, us having a very fruitful, successful relationship in Arizona, Cookies Tempe, you know, I really want to, like, kind of like get behind you on this next thing because as you mentioned to me court's coming up again soon which didn't even seem like it was possible and from what I know your pops has been down since 2011 for weed in Arizona and as we all know weed is recreational as hell in Arizona and it seems like he got like a very unfair lengthy sentence so I kind of want to talk about that today kind of give some of the facts so we can get the people that watch our show and the people that support me and support the good herb all the information they need to kind of get behind pops during this crucial time absolutely yeah okay, so okay. you know with that being said kind of break down what happened with pops and, and what the current situation is if possible okay uh, well Robert Deal um, was sentenced to 18 years in 2011 right before cannabis became legal in Arizona. Um, his sentence just heightens and highlights the factors of the Great Divide. Um, you know, none of us are perfect. Cannabis is originally a medicinal plant. He's just trying to make a way, like many of us have. Um, and unfortunately, he was given a very, very drastic sentence. Um, he's been fighting the entire time since he went down. Um, as of right now, as like you said, we didn't think it was no way. But we made it back into court um, and just as of two weeks ago. Congratulations on that. Yeah, a big step. Just getting your foot back in the door. You know what I'm saying? Um, he never laid down, essentially. You know, he never was okay with the time. A lot of people, to get that amount of time, you give up. Like, You're just like, it is what it is at this point. That's, 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 that's like a life sentence. At one point in time, seven years in America was a life sentence. 18 and they gave him flat time and no back time. He fought the case in county for almost two years. They didn't accredit him a single day of back That's time. That's wild. That's wild. How, how is that even legal? Um, and day per day. And um, but he's, we've, we've made our way back. And so as of right now, um, we're on a 45-day wait. We're just hoping for the courts to say yes, to say it's his time to go home, um, to remand his sentence and give him time served and let him return to his family. So in that 45 day way, is there anything that people can, can like actually collectively do? Is there a petition that people could sign? Is there a way to kind of contribute, you know, maybe even if it's not financially, but just like get behind the situation so they can raise awareness? Yes, absolutely. We do have a petition. Um, your signing and support would be much greatly appreciated. We're on change.org. We'll definitely add the link. Um, just saying his name, himself and others. Another reason why we've initiated Freedom Fridays. Um, it's uh, show love to the incarcerated. Yeah, so what's weird to me is like Arizona, right? I used to live in Arizona. That's why our partnership is special to me, especially being in Tempe and being with someone that actually has actually been affected by the herb and has been dealing with herb and actually cares about herb, you know? So, but in Arizona, it's like a border town. So people are used to getting caught with 1,000 pounds, 2,000 pounds, 300 pounds, 500 pounds. And to my knowledge, we is not really the biggest deal out there. Even in 2011, it lightened up a lot. It was it was right on the verge of going recreational. It was medical in 2011 too, right? 12, 2012. Yeah. 2012. But still, though, it was like easing a lot. Like it wasn't like so crazy. Like the fact he got hit with 18 years, how much weight did he actually have? It was less than a dozen pounds. It wasn't, it wasn't no kilos, nothing like that. It was a meager amount. I mean, it's enough, but come on. But we're talking about times. Arizona, like less than 12 pounds. To them, that's nothing. I know I know homies that have got caught in Arizona with 25 pounds, and they weren't really looking at like a big deal because it's Arizona. They're like, yo, we're used to catching bales or big money or coke or meth or hair on or whatever it is. It's a cartel town. We all know that. So what do you think? What do you think? What the issue was? Why do you think he had to sit down for eighteen years? It was a combination of facts. Um, I'll say plainly, um, as a person of color, it's different. The darker you are, the harder it is. Flat out. Um, on top of the fact that he wasn't laying down, he fought back. Essentially, he filed a petition for um, malicious prosecution because they went too hard on him. You know, you can't charge him with every with everything you charge the ringleader with. Like it was too much. Um, and to say plainly, it snowballed. 
They went hard. They played hard ball on them. They went hard. Oh, yeah. They don't like when you fight back. If you get, if you, if you even like flex at what they're trying to give you, or you try to fight back at all, especially the kind of, the kind of shit he fouled, mm -hmm. that's gonna tickle the wrong feathers, and they're gonna try to go hard. Mm -hmm. Um, what your guys' lawyers say? Like, what what do they feel like is possible at this point? He's been down for what twelve years already. Yeah, yeah. To say in that twelve, we had well over a dozen lawyers, attorneys that really did nothing. That's another thing in that town. It's hard to find a good attorney that's really going to work for you. They don't care. They take your money and basically laugh at you. You know, they feel like you some undeserving or wrong person instead of defend you. Um, so now he does have a new and wonderful attorney, Miss Caitlin DiMaggio, um, who's truly working for us. She's truly working. Um, and she says she's more than hopeful um, and believes and sees we have a solid case. Um, and she's truly working for us. So she believes that this will be... Um, the turnaround and the break that we've been looking for. It's crazy. Have you guys had a chance to reach out to, uh, to the Last Prisoner Project at all? Um, I have. I have. Um, they said they could assist in some ways, right? I'm looking for some more support from them. Um, they're a great foundation, done a lot for a lot of people. Um, and I'm hoping now that they can help us here now in this situation. Well, that's that's going to be my call when we get out of here because we've done a lot for them. And, you know, I don't know if you guys have seen the release papers yet. Have you guys seen that by Vibes? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so the release papers, um, a, per, a percentage of each paper sold goes back to, like, you know, prisoners in this kind of situation. So right. we've done a lot for them. So I, I'm pretty sure if I give them a call and kind of let them know that, one, you're my partner. Two, this is a fucked up situation. And three, we've had y'all back, get our back. I think it'll be all the way official. And I think that, like, the, uh, the amount of awareness that we have to raise before he actually gets seen is going to make the difference. And it's going to make all the difference because I feel like, when people start throwing a fit outside of just the people in that situation, that's when they have to start doing things, right? If people understand about this, and especially in Cookies AZ, do you guys have any um, signs about his date coming up, anything that people could do? You guys should definitely take advantage of those walls in there. You know, I know our store gets right. heavy traffic. You mm -hmm. guys should come up with some kind of incentive uh, for customers coming in to, you know, if you sign this petition, maybe get a free pack of papers or something exactly. like that, or you get a free big lighter. We just, yeah, that's the initiative. Yeah. We're pushing with t-shirts and yeah, come in, sign the petition, get a free pre-roll. Um, and we'll just continue to push in those facets. But yeah, the more people, the, the, the higher you raise your voice, the more that's going to be done. Yeah. Know? Especially today with social media and shit. And I think that everyone's over people being in jail for lengthy terms for weed. You know, if no one was hurt, no one was murdered, if there's no violence done, then what's the point? Like, how are you going to be slaying a weed in Arizona um, recreationally and have have this guy still sitting down for that? That's pretty crazy to me, especially for that long. He definitely probably pissed someone off when he filed like that. You know, I think another creative way, too, is you see the two logos in the back. I kind of want to talk about your brand because it's one thing to open up a store as a social equity license. It's another thing to kind of get the game and build something. And so, you know, I want to kind of talk about the name of your brand and, you know, what, what you plan on doing, what the purpose is behind it, and just kind of give a little background. Absolutely. Uh, so Phoenician is my brand, Phoenician Fine Cannabis. Um, it's a luxury brand for the people. Um, the Phoenician bird in and of itself represents me. Um, in several different ways. Um, I am a Phoenician, born and raised in the Valley. Um, and then the story of the Phoenician, you know, um, it's again, we rise. It comes from the ashes. The story of my life, you know, I come from a place where seemingly uh, it wasn't going to work for me, you know. So adversity has turned into advocacy in my life, you know. Um, and I just continue to push for myself, for my family, and for the people. So with Phoenician, we, we just plan to uplift the people. Our motive and intention is change in all things, bring change, um, and only do better. And it's cool, there's not a lot of females in cannabis right now. Fire. Right, right. There's not, like there's some, and shout out to the, the homegirls I know that are getting down. Shout out to my sister Erica Badu, she's doing her thing. But like, there's not a lot of females in cannabis. There's also not a lot of social equity females in cannabis. Mm -hmm. You know, and so many people that get the license end up getting played or end up getting a partnership that doesn't really make sense or ends up kind of getting put in the box of you're going to receive this much money a month for, you know, for your con contribution to actually bring the license to the table. So the fact that you're kind of spreading your wings is big because, as you know, the cookie store gets a lot of traffic and to be able to have your brand set on the shelf when it 
the launches in there is going to be powerful and especially if you know the genetics are right and you guys got good cultivation partners over at Nirvana I'm sure you guys probably have other things and it works too so right. it's going to be good you should definitely take advantage of that platform and, and push something have you thought about Pops being involved with the brand when he comes home? That was the plan for all of this yeah all right, to get affiliated with Cookies get the platform so she could speak about you know Mr. Dills get him home so he can have a way to be an entrepreneur in the cannabis industry. Because that's what social equity is all set up for, is people that have been affected by this shit, right? People mm-hmm. not just, you know, affected by, but, but the boy sat down for 18 years, and now he's about to come home. And when he comes home, it's it's legal business. He should be the one that's, you know, profiting from this as well. But I think it's going to be special for him to come home and see that, damn, his daughter kind of picked up and went the legit route, Fox. started popping off, got one of probably the most popular stories in AZ, Fox. get her brand popping. I got game for you for days on how to get that popping. And it's really just engaging with your customers, educating your customers, letting them be a part of your story, let them build that with you, let them see what you're doing from, the, from A to Z, from the ground up, and they'll appreciate it. They'll know it's not just a logo stamped on the back. They'll know you're putting in your work and stuff like that. I think Draco Gates have done a really good job. I've been watching her, um, and she's she's put her a lot of work into actually building her cannabis business. I remember she told me a long time ago about wanting to do it, and I kind of watched her t- take like the last two or three years to build it, and I appreciate that. I'm like, damn, she could she's a celebrity. She could just put her name on it, whatever, and she just actually really got in the garden and started building and started finding things, and so. It's it's gonna be a good situation, and I know you smoke too. I blow it. I've smoked with you a few times, <laughs> right. uh, so you know your shit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's gonna be big. And also, I I was telling you last time we chopped up, I haven't really seen a lot of brands from Arizona really pop off like that. There's some good ones. Don't get me wrong. There's good stores and there's there's good weed being grown in Arizona, good hash being made in Arizona. But there's not really an Arizona brand that came out and just stuck and went to other markets too. So. That'd be cool, too, if you can kind of, like, hit and then spread from there. Occupy the space. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm here to take up space, as you said. What female is really holding it down for us and what female really looks like me. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I absolutely uh, want to use this grand opportunity to maximize it to the fullest. Um, you know, we form life changers as a change lives. You know, so I come to change the game in every way. Um, and uh, yeah, us just aligning in business too is another fact that shows how change and life run in full circle. Um, like the waves you make in, <clears throat> excuse me, are like no other. You know what I'm saying? The Forbes, the things you're doing with them, it's like no other. Um, as funny of a story as it is, um, last year he made Forbes, what was it like August, September? Mm-hmm. Right? So in July, I was in Vegas and I ran into Steve, right? Um, I was invited to the Angels Investors Conference. I didn't know he was even going to be there, but Forbes was in the building. I had to run up, right? I've been telling people for years, I'm going to the Forbes. I'm going to the Forbes. Um, and he was there. You know, I got to meet him. I tell him, I'm, I'm going to be in your magazine. I'm going to be in your magazine. And the next month, you was on the cover, right? It blew my top. Like, you <laughs> tell me nothing. Um, and then just fast forward one year from there, and then we're opening the store in Tempe, like the biggest grand opening in the history of the state. And our company history, too. That We broke records that day and like, that turnout felt more realer than anything we've ever had. Like Arizona has always been my backyard. We had to deal with the pri- uh, previous group that didn't really put respect on the brand. So being out that deal and actually being able to do something that felt true to us and you guys did a good job and shout out to Nirvana. They did a good job. But like the opening had energy in that bitch. And I remember calling like at 5 or 6 p.m. after I left, I said, still going, still going, still going. That motherfucker went. How'd that feel for you that day? Like, like, it's one thing to get a store, right? It's one thing to like open a store, but that kind of energy for me, and I've opened up 60 plus stores, felt crazy. How'd that feel for you? Felt like real love. Felt like real love. You know, again, to be from there, like, and show, see the city show up like that, it was something that never seen before, and I doubt could ever be duplicated. Real yeah, people are going to try that. You know, a lot of Cali brands are going to try to enter uh, Arizona and stuff. And look, that's great for everyone. I, I applaud everyone trying to come in. But that motion right there, that day, that night, that shit was pure. It felt good. It was it was wild. I was tired of shit at the end of the day. And I just, I remember going with my homeboys and fucking up some burritos late night after that and just being whooped. That was a long ass day, but it felt good. Like that, that opening felt good. And 
I mean, that was like, like I said, it was the biggest opening we've had in our company history, so I got to feel good. Did you, did you get a chance to talk to Pops about that at all? Yeah, Something he was ecstatic. Yeah, he was like, Man, he was ecstatic, you know, to see job. it, see the t-shirts, everybody. We passed out thousands of t-shirts that day, all of them. I remember that. Robert Deals. And I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't know the whole story when you opened up. Honestly, mm-hmm. like I started learning the story afterwards. You started educating me on the story. Well, because the meeting was putting it together with you guys. It was just a blessing, like from God. We really but wanted it, to make it happen. I'm glad it worked out that way, though, because all I knew is that we're opening up in Arizona. I'll be 100% transparent. I didn't even know that we had a social equity partner in Arizona until mm-hmm. we got there and I got introduced to you guys because we have so much going on. And I got a chance to meet you guys. We smoked on the bus. And then you started really telling me your pop story. I was like, damn, what? Okay. But like it's kind of cool how things came together, and I feel like at the end of the day, things happen for a reason. And with your pop sitting on the inside right now, especially being down for eleven years, that had to bring him a lot of joy to know that you opened up one of the biggest store openings in Arizona history, where he went down for weed. And hopefully, if the universe works the way it's supposed to work, we get this out to the world. We bring a lot of awareness and attention on on your father's situation and cause enough noise to where they're gonna have to really look at that situation again and see is that really fair? I don't think so. Mm-hmm. All right. Exactly. It's all coming into play as it should. Um, Even how we won, how we even took this leap of faith into legal cannabis in and of itself was miraculous. Um, There were only 26 licenses awarded when I did win. Um, To get into it, um, we formed Life Changes on 11-11-21, right? And you know, around this time, the world about upside down, we just coming out of Corona, stuff walky. And they say, you know, we got this opportunity, but it's a gamble. Every state did it differently, um, but Arizona did a full-on lottery. It was a gamble, right? Um, and it took a true leap of faith to go for it, you know, because I told my dad when I heard about the program and its qualifications and its purpose, I was like, this is us. You know what I mean? hundred percent. It's made for you guys. Come on now. I told him it's a gamble for them, Pops. It's a guarantee for us. And we won and we did it. And in the grandest fashion, you know what I'm saying? They pulled us as number 11 um, in the middle of our application number. It is the number 11. Like, you can't tell me that this wasn't a divine opportunity and I'm not going to bring it to the fullest of its capabilities and divine opportunities. So application was on 11, 11, and the number is 11? Uh, (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That, you know, that's my mom. That's my mom's birthday. I feel like she's an angel. I feel like she's done a lot for me in my life. But it's also a very special number. You know this. And so I feel like at the end of the day, like the fact that that and I even have a whole documentary called 1111. I have an album called 1111 with my mom on the cover. The actual wow. picture, the painting you saw in the office downstairs, that's like the black and white version of that the actual real picture is the cover of my album called 1111. So if you guys want 1111 and your number was 11 and you guys had a store opening like that. And you guys came here, you know, you guys are taking a risk too. You guys came from all the way from AZ, flew here to come sit down and kind of raise awareness. I feel like you're on the right path. That number means something. Right. Yeah. It's universal. It's universal knowledge that the number means something. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. That's crazy. I didn't, I didn't know, know that. none of that. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I have a whole documentary called 1111 and, and I believe in that shit a lot. I God believe in that God. shit a lot, a lot. Wow. Put wow. everything together. God got a purpose for everything. Yeah. Man. We all got to trust and have faith in what he's doing. And he just kind of brings it all together, you know? For sure. The universe is real, bro. If you put out certain energy and things are supposed to happen, it will happen. It doesn't always answer you like that. You can't sit there and rub a genie bottle and make some shit happen like that. But if you keep putting it out there and you'll get signs sometimes. So I have, with all that being said, I didn't even know all that. But if you won your license on 1111, you're number 11, and you partner with me, and all it pushes is 1111, and I think you're going to be good. I think Pops is going to be good. I think that, like, this is the first step to, like, bringing real awareness about it. And then we should call our partners at Nirvana and make sure they start putting signage up with QR codes where people can go to that link. They can also take pictures. They can also post their Instagram. If you shop at Cookies Tempe, if you're from Arizona and you fuck with with us and you fuck with the store it's because of her and that's one reason why that store is open so it, with that being said you know how the world works support her and what she's pushing as well besides the brand let's help get her pops out that's a, that's a terrible situation for anyone to be down that long for weed especially when weed's legalized in Arizona um, I have a feeling it's probably because he pushed back the way he did There, that's a good old boy state 
they'll slap they'll slap your ass for trying to be against that system. And so, I mean, he's actually fought harder for everybody that's sitting down for weed. He he was like, nah, fuck that. And he could have stayed quiet and took what he got and took a deal and probably been out in half the time. But he was like, nah, I ain't ain't even it. So mm-hmm. that's a wild that's a wild situation. Have, has it, has any other social equity uh, people opened up in Arizona and actually had success like you have? No. I'm not sure. There's some people out there who's who's like working towards it, but I'm not sure exactly how it's going. You know? Yeah, because unfortunately that program just gets like shelved. Like mm-hmm. nothing really happens with that with that program a lot. I see it a lot get shelved. Yeah, it's a lot. I mean, cannabis in and of itself, the legal industry is is new for all of us on both sides. And the state in and up, they don't know what to do. You know, they trying, but uh, the dice fell in a lot of different ways. I'm just grateful it came this way for us. Yeah, I always said that, like, since cannabis cannabis gets taxed so much, like, the taxing of cannabis is so unfair. It's almost set up for people to fail. You can't really make money on cannabis business in today's world with the laws the way it is. But, like, picture being a social equity applicant and getting this license is like getting keys to a house with no furniture, no water, no water, no heat, no, no nothing to get that motherfucker moving. So I always say that if they're taxing so high, they should be putting aside a fund that can fund everyone that wins a license. If you want a license, you should get some startup money. Yeah. So you don't have to partner with someone because not everyone's going to be fair. Mm-hmm. A lot of people that do social equity deals are getting fucked. Yeah. Some states did, but yeah, Arizona definitely didn't. It was hard. You know what I'm saying? And not only was it was it you better find a place and you better find some money. You only got 18 months to do it. Oh, shit. <laughs> like, and that time just passed like last week, um, October the 8th. Um, I don't know who did or didn't make the deadline, but it was a deadline. So it was it was hard. It scared a lot of people. Um, and I just stood That's an pass. aggressive deadline. So you got to go find some capital, make sure you don't get fucked and figure out a way to fucking get your store popping in 18 months. Yeah. yeah. Most everyone sold their license. Yeah, of course. That's I mean, that's what... Yeah. Well, what else would you do with it? You tell somebody a little short on time and cash, you know what I'm saying? Sell out or lose it all. Um, I just dare to be different. I'm like, I didn't win on my own, so I ain't got to figure it out on my own. And I guarantee you it's going to work for me. And I thank God it worked out in the most grandest fashion. Yeah, no, that shit. Yeah, that shit, that shit was big. And like, you know, there's a few openings that felt like that in, in our in our whole portfolio. And that one was special. So that's good. But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna share some details on the link below. Don't be scared. Don't be don't be no bitch. If you see this and you're watching this, go click that link below. Show some love, and uh, not nah, definitely definitely glad that we got a chance to partner. I'm definitely glad you came down, and we're gonna start pushing buttons. And you'll see that our followers, especially you know like the real diehard people, have been following for 15, 16, 17 years plus. They're fighters too. They gonna they gonna fight for what's right, and so they'll get behind this, and we'll raise major awareness and. Definitely appreciate you being a soldier because a lot of people could have just sat back. You could have sold your license, but and bought a whip. You know what I'm saying? Got, you know, bought, bought something that didn't really mean something. But you're, you're fighting for your pops, and that's why I respect it. When should they expect uh, some product from your brand dropping? Um, well, we got Phoenician is in local stores right now. It's already up? Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. All right. Come find us in your local Tempe, our local Nirvanas, and many others soon to come. So, yeah. Who's growing in Nirvana? Yeah. yeah. So, all right, she got a she got a quality cultivator. Um, last time I was in Arizona, I was very impressed with the quality of our weed. They've taken their time to dial in. They got good genetics. So, if you see that bird, support the bird for sure. Okay, right on. Well, I appreciate you coming through today. Appreciate well, you. Right on. Appreciate Thank you. Salute, brother. Free Robert Deals. Yeah, free Robert Deals. Okay.